when you uh, the shipping and the uh, managing crisis in the, in the in the digital age and, and media in the digital age, you can't um, do anything other than start with the the image problem that shipping actually has. Um, and it's very easy to see why shipping has a, a poor image problem. Um, whenever something goes wrong, you get very strong visual images coming across from the media. Um, birds covered in oil, um, ships sinking, helicopter rescues, and so on. And that is the platform upon which um, ship, uh, pe people in shipping businesses who are tasked with managing the media in this age have to start from. There's already a sort of negative view of uh, what shipping actually looks like. And that's a shame, because actually shipping has a relentlessly good message. There is a huge amount to be proud of over the last, um, well, the last 50 years. Um, as of today, 90% of everything uh, comes to us by sea. Um, it is a huge source of revenue. In this country alone, it's 3.5%, 4.5% of GDP. Um, it is the greenest form of mass transport. Those nasty, polluting aeroplanes aren't even in sight when it comes to uh, just how green shipping is. And, of course, you know, over the last 50 years, you know, we've seen a dramatic reduction uh, in the amount of oil spilt. So we have a very good message to sell, but we're sit selling it on the basis of a platform where there is a negative image of shipping. And, that's, and this is possibly why, because the person who's tasked in this day and age with managing um, the, the media output and the, and the media content of a crisis that's developing, this is the first thing that they're probably going to know about one of their ships. Um, this is actually from the, the Burgos at Veracruz, Pemex. It happened uh, in 2016. And this is a very interesting um, uh, tale of how um, uh, th these casualties and the stories behind these casualties actually unfold because this happened a long way away. It happened in the Gulf of Mexico, but that was um, uploaded by a, a Pemex employee who should have been pointing his hose pipe at the fire concern, but instead was um, filming it. He uploaded it onto Facebook, and it went all, all around the world in a very quick period of time. Now, um, because it gained such currency, mainstream media all over the world started to follow it. But of course, they all operate under budgets. They don't fly journalists out to the Gulf of Mexico just to see a ship on fire. We can already see a ship on fire. So instead, they, they went into Google, and they started looking at the story of Pemex. And very quickly, the story that comes out and is written about, probably within about 48 hours of that accident happening, was in April, 30 people had died in a Pemex explosion. In 2013, 37 people had been killed in a blast at a Pemex uh, facility in Mexico City. Uh, in 2015, there had been yet another Pemex fire. And that was the narrative that was coming out of this story. Nothing about this particular fire itself, but the story rapidly morphed into the poor safety record of that particular company. Now, it doesn't always have to be like that. Um, more recently, we've had the, the MERS Conam, um, uh, which uh, I'm sure you're all familiar with, a very large um, container carrier which caught fire uh, earlier this year. Um, and in that particular case, um, accident, Maersk really did take control of the situation very quickly, and it wasn't complicated. All they did was they had a statement, a factual statement, coming out very quickly, which set out the facts of what had actually gone, gone on, uh, the name of the ship, where the fire had taken place, the fact that I think 23 out of 27 of the crew were safely accounted for, rescue efforts are ongoing, and so on. And then they took over control of uh, social media. And this is the sort of thing that they were, they were doing. This was the Merce Line Twitter account. Look at that. Straight away, they've taken it away from the casualty, and they're focusing on the, you know, the tragic human cost of this particular casualty. You know, our thoughts, our empathies as a big corporate are with the families of those who are still missing. And straight away, you can see how that then started to follow. It was all about sympathy for the people who were missing. It wasn't about the, the, the fire, and in fact, this whole story never really made it into mainstream media. When I Googled it uh, before I came down here, there wasn't, I couldn't find any press coverage of this in the Telegraph or the Sun, both of which covered the Pemex fire um, on the Merz Conam. We in shipping, <coughs> of course, know all about it. So what sort of lessons should you be thinking about on the digital age in terms of the media management of these casualties? Now, I don't, I don't work for a, a, a digital media management company, so I, the first one I would say is, do you care? We actually covered the Burgos fire as the, as the North P&I Club. It didn't cost us any more money simply because um, that particular fire was very poorly reported uh, in the media. Pemex is a large um, monopoly, and it probably doesn't affect their business too much either that they get that poor publicity. So they may feel that they don't have to invest 
a huge amount in doing this sort of thing. But if you do, and I suspect the majority of, uh, of ship owners in this room would feel that they have a reputation that they need to work on and protect, then you do probably need to invest in beforehand. Go back to the Maersk example. Think about how you actually populate, control, and, and make sure you have enough people with enough empathetic skills to come back very quickly with those messages uh, in response to the, the dialogue that's actually developing on social media about your, your particular casualty. There are companies that do this. Um, if you're a North member, Navigate PR, you can get a discount with Navigate. They're very good. There are plenty of others. Humans and heroes. Again, one of the aspects of social media in these days is it's largely about the human story. It's less about um, big corporates. It's less about um, uh, um, business and reputations. A lot of social media these days is about personal interaction. That's how people communicate between themselves. So on your social media accounts, actually making the story about people, about the master, his history, his record, what a fantastic track record he's actually had and how he's been involved in difficult situations before, actually is a much more compelling narrative than the, the corporate record of the, of the large company. That's what's important to you, but by, com by, by concentrating on the human side of it, uh, you're likely to get a more positive message across. And last uh, but not least, remember Tony Hayward. Um, there are a number of ship owners, I think, in this room. Some of you are I, undoubtedly great media personalities, others probably not. The reality is that Tony Hayward wasn't. Tony Hayward was the chief executive of BP who said famously, I want my life back in the middle of the Deepwater Horizon um, uh, fire. And, and that was widely ridiculed and probably led to his losing his job as the chief executive of BP, certainly that along with the other handling. I think for all uh, people in that particular position, you, we all need to think, how do we use the owner in these particular casualties? Is he or she the sort of person that does want to project a very, an image onto, this, onto the media, or is it the sort of person who finds that really uh, quite difficult and is simply not the right person to do that? So a point two to consider. And that is it. Thank you very much.